Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with his good friend, Dion from Dion Talk. How you doing, buddy? Howdy. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me here on a Monday. I am ready for round two. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I wanted to do, because you run a nonprofit, you run a, a trucking company, you are an investor, is um, I want to talk about wage inflation, because I don't think... I don't think there's a general appreciation for how bad it is. Um, and what I mean by bad is wage inflation is the key ingredient in inflation. Uh, there, there's a lot of talk here recently. There was a video created talking about incomes going up and that inflation is kind of secondary. Uh, but I want, I want everybody to realize that rising wages is inflationary, right? They're, they are not separate. Rising wages is inflationary. Uh, but let's just talk about it because I don't think people realize uh, how bad it is. And I think it's actually going to get worse, not, uh, not better. This is one that comes up in the comments a lot, especially for people who watch other channels that say wages aren't keeping up with the, in, the housing cost. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So just like for the last year, we've heard official sources of information, like news sources, not, not YouTube channels, not content creators, but TV stations. Mm -hmm. Rents are increasing 2.3% across the board. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. See, so when they say wage inflation is five to 7% across the board, and then they point out inflation was 7% or more. So you're barely breaking, even, even if you got a 7%, mm -hmm. I think it's flawed data. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cause again, when I look at nationally speaking, I think the national numbers wage inflation was 5.6%. CPI was 7.9. So again, statistically speaking, you are going backwards, but yes, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. So our generation was rewarded for longevity. Our parents' generation was rewarded with pensions for longevity. But for us, after so many years, we were vested in the 401k. We can contribute and get the match, but at some point, in a number of years, we were fully vested for that match. A lot of companies have removed that and you're vested as soon as you start contributing, especially if you have a simple plan. But our mindset says the longer you get a job, the more you're going to make because every year you're gonna get a cost of living raise, you're gonna you're gonna get promotions, you're gonna work your way up into a company. Mm -hmm. So that 5.6% that you said, sure. But in November, December, and January, just those three months alone, each month, over 4 million people left their job for another job. And that's when a real pay increase happens. This is, I had somebody bring it to me. This is a list of companies with sign-on bonuses for local trucking companies. Historically in the past, over the road companies, and I'm gonna say something that truck drivers don't like to hear, over the road driving sucks. And they had to trick you into it by giving you a big sign-on bonus. You're gone all the time, you're paid by the mile, so you're never compensated for overtime, you make hardly any money compared to a local job. Most local jobs, entry level wage is 70 to $90,000. Local employers are having to do sign on bonuses now to attract people. The local starting wage has increased well over 20% plus the sign on bonuses. The real wage inflation is the, what do they call it? The, the, the mass resignation or something. Mm -hmm. There's some term like that, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean they're just quitting work. Mm -hmm. They're quitting work for jobs that pay way more because people had to be bribed to come off of unemployment, extended unemployment, extra unemployment. Yeah. It's funny. Wages is one of those trigger words because they, everybody talks about themselves. Well, I haven't gotten a raise, so it's not happening. <laughs> Look outside your own little bubble, buddy. Uh, wage inflation is real. Um, in, in fact, I've been doing this for 30 some odd years. I was a hiring manager responsible for hiring and giving raises the last 15 years. Second line for much of that time. And here's the deal. It's the ugly truth, but it is the reality. You can either fight it, argue it, or use it. If you are the best of the best, and again, I was in a profession that produced revenue. Revenue. So talk about the people closest to the customer the person that would get the biggest raise. It's just how it works. The best of the best, the top 1%, the one, the, the, the five star, whatever you want to call it. The most I could typically give them in any one year was three to 5%. 
Now I happen to be in software. We'd usually throw some stock at them as well. But again, we're talking salaries. So it's 3% with stay. I routinely, aggressively try to recruit the number one or most often actually the number two player from my competitors. It was an active thing that I never stopped doing. That number two or number one person when I got them, minimum 20% raise. I paid one guy 50% to leave because A, he was that good. And B, it would injure my number one competitor. If you are good at what you do, you can either stay comfortable where you're at, have your friends, have your coffee talks, get a 3% bump, or you could go shop at your competitor and get paid. And get paid a lot. So, so I don't know if you've ever noticed the logo on my shirt. This is actually the logo for my nonprofit. I do job placement assistance in transportation for non-driving jobs. HR, IT, operations, logistics, all those positions that have nothing to do with being inside a truck. Across the board, wages are going up to recruit. And, and not just drivers. There's a driver shortage. Companies are, are, are fighting over each other. So driver retention is important, but driver recruiting is more important. And it's like you said, they'll, they'll give a massive raise to recruit somebody because it takes something away from your competitor. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to name some names here. And this is kind of uh, funny how this works. But there's a trucking rodeo. In our state, there's a trucking rodeo. Truck drivers come and they perform trick maneuvers with trucks. It's kind of fun. Big barbecue. Bring your families. Sponsored by Boeing. Boeing puts on a trucking rodeo. Trucking companies like Old Dominion, Oak Harbor, Red Away, YRC, Yellow, all of these companies have their drivers go for this rodeo for bragging rights so they could say, we won the 19 whatever, the 2000 whatever trucking rodeo. Hmm. But there's a Boeing rep walking around with a clipboard scoring drivers for competitors and then goes up and makes a, hey, would you like to drive for Boeing at three times what you're making now because you're that good the best way to get a raise is to change um, employers. And, and this sucks. I, I run a company. We have 60 staff. In the last 12 months, we've done two 5% raises. So in a year, we've done a 10. I'm looking at another 5% in the next two to three months if we can figure out how to uh, generate the revenue to justify it. Mm -hmm. So 15% pay increase to retain staff mm -hmm. still doesn't touch the 20% or more you're going to get if you change companies. When you have that big a wage increase, fast food restaurants were starting at $11 an hour a year ago. Now they're 18. Local trucking companies were offering $23, $24 an hour for entry level. Now it's 28 to 35 a year yeah. later. Yeah. That increases buying power. It does. Interest rates are still under 6%. So when people say prices are so high, nobody can afford it. Well, nobody could afford it on what they were making last year. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think income growth, again, income or, or, Wage inflation, they're both the same thing. They're just called different. Uh, it has started. Uh, in, in fact, Jerome Powell, I think it was six, maybe it was eight months ago, he came out one of his Fed talks and said one of the things he's concerned about is a wage inflation spiral. Those are his words, not mine. Wage inflation spirals are so painful because once they take hold, once they take root, it is hard to stop. Wages are very price inelastic. Once you are paying somebody 27 bucks an hour, you're not going to wake up tomorrow and pay them 23. It just doesn't work that way. And again, folks, a lot of you watching this, um, you were not in, you're not in a hiring position. You're not in a, a position to how it raises. I will ask you just to think about Chipotle. About a year ago now, during the pandemic, uh, Chipotle was applauded for taking the minimum wage, I think it was to 15, it might've been 18 bucks an hour, whatever it was, doesn't matter. It went up. And then what you all didn't realize is a week later, one week later, they raised the price on your burrito bowl in your burritos. Wages are the largest expense for most employers. And we are in a cycle where the employee has more power than any time of my adult life. Go get your money. If you're staying put and not getting a raise, that's on you. You can blame your employer, but that's on you. 
right? If you want to go make more money, which everybody should, we're telling you the thing. It sucks. I know. I wish your company would pay you 20% more. It just doesn't happen. There's not that money in the budget. It's, it's just, yes, it's just the reality. So I don't think, I think wage inflation, I think wage inflation gets worse before it gets better. And, and what I mean by worse means it goes higher. I think we maybe Greg Dickerson and I talked this morning about deglobalization. And he's right. If we bring more manufacturing jobs home, we're going to pay more. Uh, that's going to be more inflationary. Uh, we have a lot of uh, workforce participation. In order to get people off the sidelines, wages have to go up. We are in a cycle where wages are going to go up for years to come. To, th to say that wages are going to be flat is to be ignorant. Now, yes, your wage may not have moved, but th is that on the employer or is that on you? Because wages are going up. Just wages, go to a competitor. I know it sucks. I know you leave your friends. Some of you have non-competes. I get it. There are ways. So that's my thoughts. Two really quick things to wrap up. First, mm -hmm. to the people working in my office, when Mike says to quit your job and go make money somewhere else, he's not talking to you. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, <Are you> okay. <laughs> and the second thing, when it comes to real estate and people are talking about people, the prices can't continue to go up because people can't afford it. We are seeing record wage inflation with yeah. the mass migration from one company to another. Mm -hmm. Then add the 40 year loan product that keeps the payment lower because yeah. it's stretched out over a longer period of time. And we're going to see more price increases, which is gonna be something we touch on then in the next video. Yep, thanks buddy. And where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. Appreciate you, thanks. Ciao.